yesterday we were watching the, the Sundowns game. Sundowns, of course, won. And of course, there was the fan stuff that happened. But it, it opened up a very interesting conversation that we started to have uh, on Lost Light's show. And I want to see how you guys feel about this. Um, we all know that it's been eight years, maybe, since Sundowns uh, won the Champions League, right? Eight years since Sundowns won the Champions League. They've gotten to the semis last year. They're in the semis right now. Uh, they're looking very good. Um, they've been one of the big dogs in Africa for a very long time. It has been maybe a decade, a decade, yeah, around a decade uh, in terms of African success, where they've been at the top of the mountain, right? But it prompted a very simple question. And it's not to do with Rulani and all of that. It's to do with what does it look like when a team takes the next step? And does Sundowns have to sacrifice some of its uh, family orientation in order to go fight Bo'al Ali? And I mean it like this. Bo'al Ali, the Champions League, is a must. The Champions League is a non-negotiable if you're a coach of Al Ali. You staying at Al Ali after not winning a Champions League is very, very slim. Regardless of whether you've won the league, regardless of whether you've done any of that. And they move in a sense that everybody understands what the true goal is here, right? And what's interesting about Imamuriji Sundowns is it took Pizzo X amount of years to go and win the Champions League. You guys haven't won it. Uh, Sundowns hasn't won it ever since then. Does there come a time where you have to start instituting the ruthlessness of an Al-Ali in order to take the next step? Is it a necessary step? Because when you look at Imam Reji Sundowns, a lot of what Imam Reji Sundowns does is still influenced by Upizo. Right? And it's good. It's not uh, uh, me saying that it's bad. It's still influenced by Upizo, you know. Uh, coach Pizzo came in, Rulani is, is, was an under-19 coach, was an inside guy, you know, he grew with his coaching with Sundowns, obviously left for those what, two years, came back, he's now the head coach. Does that emotional tie hamper uh, uh, going, does the mo that emotional tie maybe hamper how Rulani and coaches of Mamluk Sundowns would be viewed? Even when Mangoba Mnuiti was moved aside, right? Um, he wasn't fired. He wasn't fired. He was demoted, right? They still couldn't let go of him. And when you are now almost 10 years uh, uh, from the time you won the Champions League, right? Does there come a time that management maybe should go, you know what, guys, it needs to become a machine all the way through. Coach Rulani said something uh, last night where he said, give me four years. I, all I ask is for four years. He listed it. He listed that, um, uh, you know, it, called, it took Coach Pizzo this long. He listed that, you know, they've got a continental trophy. He listed that, you know, they've got the league. But then he was like, with regards to the Champions League, which is a completely different conversation I want to have later on, but with regards to the Champions League, give him four years to try and win this trophy. And... In my head, I was like, I don't think there's an Al Ali coach that would say that. And what's interesting is the responses that I get, uh, especially from South Africans when it comes to coaching, the responses that I get and, and making changes all have to do, you know, with uh, if I get rid of him now, everything will collapse. If I make a move, everything will collapse. If we do this, I'll be achieved. If I do that, he actually hinted to it, Urla, and he said something similar, he just didn't say the, the team name. Uh, everything will collapse. But then when you look at some of the more successful teams in the world in terms of continental competition, your Real Madrid, your Al Ali's, um, you, you might say that that policy that they've instituted was actually something that gave them more of these trophies. That gave them more of these trophies, right? And it's not to say it's right, because on the flip side of that conversation, you could argue that everything Sundowns has built up to this point has been 
builds through a, a, a familiarity, a similarity, you know. This one comes in after this one, and that one was under this one before he came in. Uh, Coach Pito came in, groomed Rulani. Rulani came through the ranks, under 19, what, 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 came back to Sundowns, uh, pulled in by, by Pito. You could say that that's a succession plan. Pito brought in Mangoba. Mangoba sat under Pito for a very long time. Then he became, when he became the head coach, you know, there's a, there's a, uh, there's a conveyor belt at Sundowns that moves through that team that makes sure that when a new coach comes in or a new person comes in, they're not new in a sense. And they can carry on with uh, uh, the structure and tradition of Sundowns, right? They can come in and, you know, follow a trend. Uh, and it's not hard to go and rebuild. You don't have to go rebuild or go and build around these guys, right? So you could argue that Sundowns' success at this current moment has come from that. Then I ask, how do you take the next step then? If Rulani, oh, let's not say, if Rulani was to win the Champions League and he moves on, and seven years from now, you sit with another coach who has to win it in four years, five years, um, is, it, is it then you look at it and you go, I, since we can't repeat this thing as much as we need to, do you change? And I think that's a very interesting question when it comes to how do you win? You know, how do you win and how do you do those things? And there is questions and, and, and you can make valid points about when you're fighting guys, you're fighting heritage is what they say. It's heritage. Uh, Real Madrid has a heritage of winning this thing. Al Ali has a heritage of winning this. But also, I think at some point Al Ali had to make the call to say, guys, we're taking this thing serious now. We're taking this thing serious. Now, it's not an if, and, or but. You have to win the Champions League as a Sundowns coach. At what point do you get to that? You've dominated the league. What? Uh, this is going to be the seventh time you win the league. You're six points away from winning the league uh, early. Um, you've won it seven years in a row. You are the team that has won the most titles, league titles within South African football. Incredible, incredible uh, achievement but you're also a team that has looked Africa in the eye a lot and hasn't gotten over the hump now again they could get over the hump uh, uh, they could get over the hump this year it could be something but it bears asking the question to Rulani's point when he spoke about a team that struggled I look at Keza Chiefs for example and the chopping and changing of coaches and the loss of philosophy and all of that stuff has really hurt Ike's achieves. Uh, and it's part of the reason why we haven't won uh, uh, the, any trophy in such a long time. But to back the point that I'm making, when Chiefs was at the top, there was a, a disconnection between the coaches and the management. And I mean it by saying, you knew as a Chiefs coach that you wouldn't get three years at Chiefs. Before Steve Compella, very few coaches at Chiefs, I'm trying to think of them now, got more than three years at Chiefs. Niwina. And I think part of it was that they had this unemotional, uh, uh, job-like uh, relationship with those coaches. Come in, you win, we are hamba. Come in, you win, you are hamba. And you could argue that one of, the, one of the places where they lost it was when they went, you know, Coach Steve is uh, somebody who was uh, a, a coach that has been in the PSL for a while. And we, he deserves to get time. You know, uh, Atazwani is, you know, one of our own. He came in from inside. Uh, we need to bring him in and give him time and do all of that stuff. When they started shifting towards process and project and all of that, they kind of lost their way, right? So it's a very interesting, I, I don't want to lean on any side of it. I just feel like it's such an interesting conversation, especially for a team as amazing as Sundowns. At this point, you would have thought that Sundowns would have four, five, six Champions Leagues in the bag. You know, they come out and they outplay Bo'al Ali. 
They come out and people park the bus. They come out and they keep doing these things. But it seems that there's a glass ceiling that sundowns just doesn't happen to get over. What are some of the ways that you can get over that hump as a team? It's a very, very interesting uh, 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 convo when we speak about it. It's a, it's, it's a very, very interesting convo when you speak about it. Um, and I know some of you may not care for the conversation, but these are the things, man, when we break down football, we have to speak about. Why does Al Ali have 11 of those titles? Why does Al Ali, even when they are outplayed and it looks bad and they've got, you know, Coach Rani said he watched the Al Ali game that they played versus TP Mazembe and he fell asleep and it was ugly. Al Ali has not looked like a dominant team over the past five years when you watch them play, but they win. What, what gives you that quality and how does Sundowns gain that quality? Super, super important question, but I wanted to bring it up and I wanted to put it in your court. Maybe we'll speak about it on the show. But what do you guys think about how does Sundowns become an, uh, uh, a team that can continue and repeat uh, uh, winning a Champions League? And do they have to copy what happens up north or can they make their own way with how they run and uh, keep it in-house and all of that stuff.